Hey guys, welcome to the fourth part of this series. Today we will implement the most important part of the PPO algorithm. It's the custom loss function that was introduced in the PPO paper and we'll use this for training the actor and critic models. So recall that pi indicates the policy that is defined by our actor neural network model. By training this model, we want to improve this policy so that it gives us better and better actions over time. Now, a major problem in some reinforcement learning approaches is that once our model adopts a bad policy, it only takes bad actions in the game. So we are unable to generate any good actions from there on, leading us down an unrecoverable path in training. So what PPO paper suggests is to use a ratio between the newly updated policy and the old policy in the update step. Now, computationally, it is easier to represent this in the log form. So using this ratio, we can decide how much of a change in policy we are willing to tolerate for this update step. This prevents us from making drastic changes in our policy. The loss for the actor model is defined as the minimum between the functions P1 and P2 where P1 is the ratio we calculated times the advantage which we obtained in the last video. P2 is the clipped version of this ratio meaning we only allow like a 20% change of policy pi in either positive or negative direction. The value of epsilon is suggested to be kept at 0.2 in the paper. Critic loss is nothing but the usual mean squared error loss with the returns. Finally, we can combine the two losses if we want using a discount factor to bring them to the same order of magnitude. Adding an entropy term is optional, but it encourages our model to explore different policies and the degree to which we want to experiment can be controlled by an entropy beta parameter. Let's now get to the implementation of this custom loss function. First thing we need to do here is to pass as input argument to our actor model uh, various information that we need in order to calculate the PPO loss. So let's define various inputs here. Old policy underscore probs equals to input shape equals to one comma output dimensions. Let's get this as an argument in the function up here. Okay, next. Advantages equals to input shape one comma one. Now the same for rewards and values. Now we can add these input tensors to the list of model inputs. Now we need to come down here and replace uh, this mean squared error loss with a custom PPO loss. Let's call it PPO underscore loss and we'll pass all the input tensors to it that we defined up here. Now we can define this function up here and take those input arguments. So define a nested function loss y underscore true comma y underscore pred new policy underscore props is given by y underscore pred and the old policy we already have it up here in the arguments. 
So we can now define the ratio as k dot exponential of k dot log new policy minus k dot log of old policy Now P1 equals to ratio times the advantages. P2 equals to K dot clip ratio comma the minimum value is 1 minus the clipping parameter. And the maximum value is 1 plus the flipping value. Times the advantages. So let's declare the clipping value to be 0 0.2 up here. So now our actor loss will be the minimum between P1 and P2 and we'll use mean across all the 21 actions in the probabilities. The critic loss is just the mean squared loss. And finally, total loss is critic discount. Uh, let's declare this up here as 0 0.5. So critic discount times the critic loss plus actor loss. minus the entropy term. Now this can be written as uh, entropy beta. Let's set this equal to uh, 0 0.001 times the formula for entropy that is k dot mean negative of new policy times the log of it. And now we can simply return this total loss and return the loss function here. So this is how we can implement the custom PPO loss and uh, we can use it to train this actor model. So now let's come down here and make the necessary changes to how we want to invoke the actor model. First, we need to add the output dimensions equal to number of actions. Next, we need to pass here some uh, dummy inputs. Uh, this is because of the additional inputs we added to the model. Now while making prediction, uh, since the loss parameters are not really required, we are not calculating any loss. So we just can pass dummy values here. So let's just define the dummy variables at the top. This is just a numpy array of zeros. So uh, dummy underscore n uh, is uh, of shape one comma one comma the number of actions. And the other dummy variable is of the shape one comma one comma one. Now we can finally start the model training. Let's call the model actor dot fit function will pass a list of inputs 
a list of outputs and some other arguments. So let's set verbose equals to true, shuffle equals to true. We'll have eight epochs. We can also set TensorBoard fallbacks here uh, if we want to monitor the different loss values over uh, training. But uh, let's just keep it simple for this tutorial and leave it out. So going back to the inputs, we have to pass states, action props, advantages, rewards, values, uh, this will be all except the last one. Okay, now we'll just need to reshape the reward here uh, to a new shape. Minus one, comma one, comma one. Just need to correct this typo here. Uh, now the output we want is the one hot encoding of the actions that we took before. And of course, need to reshape it as well to minus one comma number of actions. Similarly, we can train the critic model as well. This only takes the state as input and the returns as output. We can add the same additional arguments here as the actor model. Now let's try to run this and see if the training starts. I'm going to reduce the PPO steps here just so that it runs quicker and it's easier to demonstrate that way. So we are now looping through the PPO steps in order to collect a batch of experiences. Okay, great. Finally, you can see that the model was trained here and uh, it seems everything is working well. Now, of course, if we actually want the model to learn something, we need a lot more training samples here. So we'll cover this in the next part and see how to train the models for some more iterations and uh, also round off the code with some model evaluation and uh, saving the checkpoints of our best model. So make sure you tune into the next part. It should be out in a few days and I'll see you next time.